Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are currently in the Budlier stock bed here, which we've got at the nursery, uh, which is a little bit neglected, I must admit, um, because we have grown a lot of Budlias in the past and then rattled that down a little bit because demand you know, was for certain customers who dropped out. But now we're back online, um, the Budlias are going to be more important. So there's quite a lot of unusual varieties that we do, which the best way to get them to do what we want them to do in the nursery setting is to plant them and then they will grow on nicely and give us the right material for cutting. So the first one I'm planting here is a very unusual one. And this is um, quite, quite a big plant. So this one I'm planting is Budlia globosa lemon ball. So globosa is uh, choice enough, but to have the variety lemon ball is quite a lot different because it's it's a lighter colour. So Gilobosa has is known for the small round orange balls that it has. This is a lighter colour, so this is more sort of lemony colour. So it's a nice variety to have and was given to us by a friend of the nursery. It's obviously root bound, pot bound as it were, uh, which doesn't matter in the scheme of a buffier. They, they certainly don't mind that, but the trouble is keeping it um, fertilised and keeping it uh, with nutrients in it so that it actively grows so the best way to do that is get it in the ground and then the soil will uh, make up for what we would need to do by adding a lot of nutrients to it and it just we can forget about it and in the background it's going to grow and then when i'm ready to do my Budlia globosa lemon ball cuttings the material will be here so the first thing we need to do is dig a hole and our stock bed we'll come back to this later in the year when it's in flower it looks really very good and it's um it's a very good example of the difference between the Budlia genus that we've got, even just with the, the Davidii species. We've got a few other species in here, Colvellii and um, a couple varieties of that. And we've also got the cross with the Wariana species, which are extremely um, unusual. So we've got Golden Glow, Moonlight and Sun Gold, as well as some of the other ones like Salmon Spheres. So a lot of um, variation throughout the stock bed here. And uh, when it's in flower, obviously in the autumn, it is amazing. We've got large trees around us here and it brings lots of insects and butterflies and very interesting uh, things all through here to feed on the flowers. So we'll look back at that later on in the season. And hopefully the ones I planted will be doing their thing. Now, uh, this stock bed here, or, or the bed or the soil, however you want to uh, look at it, this actual, we'll, we'll look at this as a garden bed. This is actually very poor, so, well it's, it's good soil in one sense, but it's it's a little bit more like subsoil, it's quite rough, there's, there's quite a lot of grit, gravel, and um, I suppose it is like a poor subsoil, so uh, there's plenty of nutrients here, because this used to be an open ground nursery, so the soil was very well looked after and it was turned and cultivated for a, a very long period, so that a lot of the, the good practice is still there. So, for, this makes this a perfect spot for Budlias because they don't mind poor soils, and in fact some of them actually thrive in the poor soils, so perfect stuff. So, it's quite a difficult, um, quite a difficult dig, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I planted all of these, I think we've got maybe 25 in this bed. It was hard going, it's going to be hard going you just got to sort of get into it. It's the first one of the season. It's quite exciting in many ways. And you can probably hear the gravel and the stones that we're finding. And really all you can do is just kind of work your way down. And there we go, we're through it now. So I like to just kind of mark out the square that I'm going to plant into. And kind of get that soil nice and loose, get it up, and break it up. And then we've got some nice rich loamy soil there, sort of a sandy loam, which is very good. Okay, so once the so once we've dug the hole, uh, sometimes it may even rain like it is now. So we're going to plough on regardless, unless it really comes down. The next step is to get the fertilizer. So all I'm using here my trusty gloves is grow more so standard stuff doesn't need a lot we're, we're talking budly so you know more choice plants you'd probably want to um, go to a better depth of, of, of uh, ground preparation you may want to add a different fertilizers blood fish and bone all the sort of things like that but for this process because we're on the nursery we're just going to use grow more and that is these hard 
balls that break down very quick, very quick release fertilizer, and it's a standard um, mix of MPK 777. So that's very good. So once we've got the hole dug, it's time to test to see if the plant is going to fit in the hole. Make sure the hole's where it needs to be, and really you want the level of the plant where it was in the pot to be level with the ground, and it is there perfectly where I want it to be. So that's the time to add some of the grow more that I just mentioned in the hole and on the soil and that will be fine. Now we do have a few weeds on top of the pot here and all I'm going to do, this isn't necessarily advice but this is what I always do, is actually just pull off all of those weeds and the top soil about an inch uh, of the pot plant and I chuck it into the bottom of the planting hole with the idea being that that's so far down that it's going to turn into a sort of green manure. It's not The, the, the weeds are never going to grow up from there. I wouldn't do it if we're dealing with dandelions or anything like that, but we're talking about annual weeds, uh, which, you know, as soon as they've flowered, they're over. So they're not going to cause any problem. So once that's sorted, we've got our root system there, which you can see is a little bit pot bound. Now I'm not going to break that root up because it's absolutely not necessary with something like Budleyism and, and with most plants personally. Uh, that's my view on it, that it just adds to root disturbance and almost sets the plant back a little bit. So there's no problem there, the plant will find itself and the roots will find where they need to go. And if nothing else, we've got all the disturbance on the top anyway. So there we go. So we place that in the hole, make sure one, it's exactly where we wanted it, which it is, that's where it was placed out before. Two, make sure it's nice and level, try and get rid, we don't want sort of it sitting up like that and have air pockets underneath. And then we backfill the hole. So again, just making sure there's no big lumps in the soil that's going back in. You can hear how gravelly it is. That's no problem for these buddlers, they really enjoy that. We just sprinkle it around. Right round each, uh, each side of the hole, round the back, round the front. Level it off like that. Then a nice quick tip just with something like this anyway, is to grab the stem and just kind of, just gently lift it up and shake it down like that. And you'll find a lot of the loose soil will go down the side. And then remembering where the edges of your hole are, use the heel of your foot and nice and firmly, no stomping, you don't want to go like this, tapping it or anything like that. Just one firm press with the heel around the hole. This is a little bit difficult where this has got a bit of a split stem, so it is a little bit difficult to get into where the hole is, but you don't need to worry too much. It'll all get itself there where it needs to be. And then just again, level off around the top. Now, I fully am aware that if you were in a garden, you'd probably want to do a bit of a finer job of this, but in a nursery stock bed like this, there's no problem with it leaving it a little bit rough, it'll all settle down. We like to let uh, nature take its course with some of these things, to be honest, so it'll all settle down what needs to be. And there we go, and then one final check, bit of a pull. It's not going anywhere. And that is our Budlia Globosa lemon ball planted in the ground there. The uh, only thing left to do I don't actually have on hand, we're going to drag a pipe out. So if you're in the garden setting, you'd want a watery, uh, watering can now. Good sort of five litres, I guess, so, you know, a good small um, watering can. And you want to give that a very good watering in, it in and that will let all the soil settle around the root ball and also connect the, root, the new root system to the soil and encourage them to spread out. As I said, I've got a few more to plant here. So once they're planted, we'll drag a pipe out and use the lamps and do it all in one go. So there you go, hopefully that's been of interest. And um, stay tuned to the channel because like I said, later in the season, we'll come back and check in on how these are doing, especially as they start to come into flower. We've got up to about 30 varieties here now, so you can imagine how good it is. We've got shorter ones at the front, some of the dwarfer varieties, and the large ones at the rear, and it makes for quite a display. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.